Now, autosomal recessive inheritance. Recessive genes carried on the autosomes. And the example I want to take here is uh, cystic fibrosis. It's an abnormal condition, but it's recessive. So this means the normal gene is dominant. So we give that a capital C. The cystic fibrosis gene is recessive. Now, typically what happens here is we have two parents meet and they are both big C, small C. Now, what this means is because the cystic fibrosis gene is recessive and the normal gene is dominant, that because they have a copy of the normal gene, both of these parents are going to be phenotypically normal. They may not even know that they're carrying the cystic fibrosis gene. And in most Western populations, this probably describes about one in 20 or so of the population. So I may be carrying a cystic fibrosis gene, but I don't know because I've got a perfectly normal dominant gene. So what happens here? We're going to get gametes with big C, small c, or big C, small c. And then these gametes are going to recombine in the usual way. Could be that one with that one, or that one with that one. Or it could be that one with that one, or that one with that one. They are the possibilities. Now in this case, that will give us two big C's, which means that person is phenotypically normal and does not suffer from cystic fibrosis. Genotypically, they are homozygous for the normal gene. That's good because that means they can't carry the cystic fibrosis gene onto the next generation. Now, alternatively, that big C there could combine with that small C there, and that would give us a child who was genotypically heterozygous. Fortunately, they won't suffer from the disease because they have a copy of the normal dominant gene. But of course, they could potentially carry that on to the next generation. In this situation here, we have the small c and we have a big C. And that's the same. We have a child who is potentially a carrier, but phenotypically will be normal. They will not suffer from the condition. But here we have the two small c's. This means the person has two copies of the recessive cystic fibrosis gene. There is no normal dominant gene present, so they won't be normal. So they will suffer from cystic fibrosis. And this is the classic monohybrid three to one ratio. Three there and one there. It's the classic three to one ratio, three to one. So if we're advising parents who knew that they were genotypically heterozygous, and there are tests available for this, we could tell them that there's one chance in four that any individual child from their marriage would suffer from cystic fibrosis. We could tell them there's one chance in four that the child would be perfectly normal and incapable of carrying the gene on to the next generation. But we could tell them there's a 50-50 chance from these two that their child, although phenotypically normal, would be a carrier and could potentially carry cystic fibrosis on into the next generation. So this is what we find with autosomal recessive disorders. The three to one ratio, one chance in four that any particular child from the marriage would be affected, assuming that both parents are heterozygous for the recessive pathological gene.